Hey there, Commanders. So, I've muted the background audio. I'm just going to play this off my computer, and I want to focus on a couple of specific points. It is obvious that there are some optimization issues. Uh, you'll see right here, I, I don't have a bad computer. I've got a an FX8350 and an RX590, which more than meets the recommended system requirements for this game. And just sitting in the menu, I'm chugging along at just under 30 frames, but there were some sequences in here where I dove down to like seven or eight frames and stayed there for a few minutes. And I'm not running ultra settings, I'm running high. So I'm hoping that gets figured out here in the coming weeks. I, I will say from the get-go that I prefer, I favor Xbox controllers for in-game. I do want you to understand where I'm coming from as I'm reviewing this. So I spent some time exploring the interfaces, seeing what everything costs, moving around the station, checking the mission maps, and this is where I ran into the first big problem of the night, which was that every mission that I fussed through with this board was 150,000 light seconds away. I did not have a way to filter by distance. I did not have a way to filter by anything really except reward choice, which bummed me out because I would have liked to select missions that were closer to home even if they made less money while I figured everything out. But everything I picked was just really flipping far away and it was extremely irritating. The interface layout itself is actually not that bad. Now I, I basically explored around trying to get familiar with and comfortable with the interface before I finally took my first transport mission. Because I didn't want to deal with salvage, I didn't want to deal with combat, I didn't understand how any of the new key bindings work, so I wanted something simple to get things started. And basically it took me a couple of minutes to figure out how to plot everything because the orrery map, this is another bug, will not allow you to zoom in and actually select the settlements that Apex wants you to navigate to. So you should keep that in mind. You have to be in the traditional system map in order to actually click on the settlements so that you can send a taxi to them. And the other thing you should know is that once you select a taxi, like once you've actually got the route plotted, it takes about 15 to 20 seconds for the, for the route to actually prime to where you can go get in the elevator. And once the elevator is ready, you have two minutes to go get on the shuttle or it just leaves. Now the shuttle experience wasn't too bad. This is me getting to the cargo bay. I liked all, of, I, I love the animated UI elements inside these spaces. I think that's a nice touch. It's an attention to detail thing that surprises me. As is the level of detail on the shuttle. This is an adder and you can finally get close enough to these things to actually scrutinize their, the, the hull itself and you can see a lot more detail than has ever been possible. I am a little agnostic on the boarding methodology. I mean, this is no worse than what the X game series has done. You just teleport around inside their ships. And from a technical perspective, you know, I'll, I can I can deal with that. I'm okay with that for now, but I would like to see something on ship interiors, even though I fully expect if we get something on it, it's going to be in the order of years away. I am less worried about ship interiors than I am with quality of life and depth of gameplay. And I am totally fine with the graphical appearance of this game as it stands right now because I know that I know that it's going to get touched up. I mean, you can see some there's like popping and some weird color gradient stuff going on in the background. But there's also this purple atmosphere that I'm thinking is probably coming from the gas content in the atmosphere, which answers a question that I had in the back of my mind for from a realism perspective. I do like the dialogue that the taxi cab pilots have. It, it increases depth, but the dialogue is limited to taking off and landing. Now we're on the planet's surface. Something weird was going on. I don't know what, but when I first landed, the guards were attacking something. And the station was in a state of, of, of lockdown. All of the alarms were going off. I thought I was about to get popped having done nothing wrong and having a clean record, and I would have probably just had to file it as a bug report. but. The notice that popped up here told me where to go and I liked that it gave me a key code so I could get into that thing without a fuss. I wander around, I try to interact with, I was having some issues with my key mapping that was keeping me from interacting properly so I couldn't get anything to turn on, I couldn't get the monitors to work. It kept asking me about an e-breach. So I wander around the facility draining my battery life until I find the hab. And I like this mechanic where you've got a keypad and you just, like that's how you control access to things. I get the mission and then I try to figure out how to call the taxi cab because I can't get my little pinwheel to display because my key maps are still busted. 
I go wandering around thinking maybe I can figure it out. Um, maybe there's a terminal outside near the taxi cab pad where I can call the taxi cab. I go all the way out here. There isn't any terminal on the pad, and so I end up coming all the way back and giving up on my custom key map while I'm standing in the HAB unit next to the container. I go back in here, and this is where I actually set my key maps to gamepad, and then everything just starts working perfectly. It's a shame it took me an hour to figure that out, but I, I ascribe that to being my own fault rather than anyone else's. Then I could start accessing the terminals and seeing how everything worked, and it was, it was great. I could never figure out how to get the suit recharge sockets to work, although I'm sure there's resources available. I wasn't aware of how to do that. So I ended up being in a situation where I finally figured out right here that the Apex, uh, the Apex shuttle was in the pinwheel menu. And I call the shuttle, but I've only got 20% battery alive. So basically, when it arrives, I have to sprint from the HAB unit across the compound to the landing pad before my battery dies. But it was fun to realize that I could basically fly uh, with the gravity down. Side note, um, let me rewind here. That's a defense turret. I figured this out on a second run, but there's a, a pad that you can actually cut into the defense turret, and I assume you can disable it. So you don't have to knock out a reactor to disable at least some of the facility defenses if you wanted to. Anyway, uh, that was the end of the first mission. And then it was 10 more minutes in boring super cruise to get all the way back to Armstrong's legacy, which, took, which takes up a substantial chunk of what's in here. And I finally get back and I'm able to turn the mission in. I noticed this here and it made me wonder uh, if accidents are something that commanders influence, but eh. the scenery was good, the, the layout was good. My initial thoughts on this are that it's a, it's a pretty cool game, and I'm interested in seeing what else can be done with it. This is a good start. I think that uh, I think that FDEV's on to something. I just think that we have a, the same problem potentially that we've had with other systems in the game, like with engineering, where all the ingredients are there, but the, they're just not properly proportioned, and it causes the game to feel a little bit strange. Uh, like engineering kind of blew out PvP a little bit and made it not fun. I'm worried that ground combat and other elements might end up being difficult to work with. I guess we'll, we'll see how it all pans out, but uh, those are my thoughts on night one, and I'll probably be following up with some more detailed thoughts here later on.